Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Max 20 Questions and today we're having a look at an application called Photo Sweeper. And what it does, it looks for the duplicates and photos that are similar within your albums and your photos. It works with the folders that you have on your computer in your hard drives and it will also work with iPhoto, Lightroom and of course Aperture. So first of all it actually gives you a tip about how to get started with this here and it says uh, drag and drop photos here so I can just drag a folder in there and it will get started so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to use this media browser and with this media browser you can set up your aperture library or iPhoto library and then bring things in from that. So to do that what you have to do is you click on the plus sign there and select your aperture library click on open and you will get it in there so that you can bring things in. Then you just go to your project, select a project, drag it in here and it will start doing a business of looking through for duplicates and so on. So the other thing that you will notice when you first start this up, you'll get some tips. You've got one of six pages there, which gives you hints on how to get started. And you have to just uh, flick through those and you'll find out how to make this thing work. And it is pretty easy because it's a simple enough program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in a folder. So I'm going to grab this one here and drag it and drop it into this window. So these are all photos that I've sent up into Google Plus and they're probably not going to be too much in the, in the way of duplicates but we'll have a look and see what it finds for us. Now you've got a number of different ways of looking at this here and you go to the settings up here and you can also see that there's image info in there as well. So if I go to this one here and go to image info you see it's got all the information there about the photograph. Let's go back into settings and we'll tell it to look for the time interval and on this time interval we can set it so that it will look for photos that were taken the same day. So 24 hours or less. And we can put it so that's even down to 3 minutes or less. So that's looking for photographs that have been taken within 5 minutes of each other. Select similarity between photos. And I go for a partial matching or I can go for an exact matching. As you can see at the moment it hasn't actually selected any photographs there. It hasn't done anything with it at all. So I'm just going to click on compare. This first thing that comes up here is would you like to mark photos automatically? Well, I can tell it not to show me that again if I don't want it to, or I can just tell it to auto mark, don't mark or show preferences. And just for the moment, we're going to go with auto mark. And these are all the groups of photos that are similar. We just got three groups in there that it's decided were similar based upon the settings that we used. And we can change that matching level up there the auto mark again so you can change things again once you set it up and this time it's uh, actually ca captured a few more that it thinks are similar so instead of having just three groups we have now got six so let's have a look at group number one so in group number one as you can see these are two quite similar photos and this is because i use snap heel on this pair of photographs here and in the middle there you can see there's the, a wave rider board there someone standing on it which i removed and that's the one here that I actually sent up and you see I use snap heel on it. So as it stands at the moment this here photograph is the one that's going to be deleted. This one on the right and that's because it's got this red border around it or this red marker in it. And then this one here we've got two photographs which are similar and this I took at Calvary's railway station and I could delete either one of those there. In this group here we've got two that are same or similar and it's chosen one of them, this one here. It's sometimes a little bit arbitrary about which ones it chooses. I'm not sure why it chooses which one, but still. So on this one here, it's chosen that photograph. And as you say, I've got all the uh, details there and the preview and the histogram and all the sort of uh, EXIF data in there as well. And then this other group here, group four, all these are quite similar because a set of flags that were moving around in the photograph. And it's basically saying they're going to keep this one here and all the rest will be deleted. And you can see this one here is the one that is suggesting that we should keep. But I could change that if I want to by just doing a double click on that there. That's made it so that it is not going to be kept. And change that one there. Did double click on it and that is going to be kept. So once you've done all this, what do you do? Well, you can decide that you're going to get rid of them. So you go up to Marked in the menus. And you've got a number of different options there. So it's Show Marked Photos. So that shows you all the ones that are going to be deleted. So that's uh, one way of looking at it here. You know exactly what's going to be removed from your folder. And we can do move marked photos to folder. And we can also do a move marked photos to folder and rename. 
or even a copy of marked photos to folder and rename. So I've got a number of different options there. Or of course what you can do is just move them directly into trash and not see them again. So let's do the move marked folders to folder and rename them, see what options we've got in there. So let's click on that and we can change all of this here. So we can put a prefix on there. So with the prefix we're going to choose on this one here, photo swept. So all the photos that have been moved across into the new folder will have photo swept put in there as a prefix. Or you could do that with a suffix, or you can change the base name. You can do a find and replace in there if you want to. So basically I can look for things that, say if I want to change all these ones with ramblers on there, I can change ramblers into a different word. So let's do a continue with that and see what happens. And for the moment what I'm going to do is just put it into the desktop just so that you can see where it's gone to. So we're going to say a new folder and we're going to call it sweepings. And we're going to click on create and then I'm going to tell it to open. So it's going to choose where it's going to put them all and all those photos have been shifted. Let's go into Finder and in Finder we go to desktop which is where I put those things there. And we go to sweepings. And as you can see everything just worked out the way it was supposed to. We've got photo swept as the thing that's put into this one here. So this one here, look, if I press the space bar, we can do a uh, look at this. And you can see that's the photograph that was moved and everything is working just as it's supposed to. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of those there. So let's go to photos and we're going to clear the photo list. So this is Dave Allen looking at Photos Weaver for how you can find duplicates of your photos on your hard drives. And in the next video, looking at Photos Weaver, we're going to have a look at how you use this application to deal with duplicates that are in your photo managers like iPhoto, Aperture or Lightroom. Don't forget to circle me up on Google Plus under the name of David Allen with the gold. Bye bye now. Talk to you again soon.